I think it was very much a story about family. It's a very clever script. It's deceptive. Um, it's deceptive in that it's m about much more than you would think at first. And it's also extremely funny. And for me, as a, a longtime Alexander Payne fan, I think it is arguably his most emotional movie. When so it, to take what he does and, and with his characters, sort of the, uh, the uniqueness of his characters and to put them in this situation, it's, it was an undeniable script. Paul Hunnam, played by Paul Giamatti, is a professor at this private boys' school in New England in 1970. He's been there forever, seemingly, and the students talk about him as having been there forever. Most of them don't know that he was actually at one point a student there himself. He um, is one of those professors you don't know a lot about. He sort of scares you, and uh, he's a uh, He's a very, very smart man who should be a great teacher, and he's not. And I think in the process of this movie, probably makes himself a better teacher. Paul Giamatti is one of those wonderful actors that's a really a chameleon, and he can play any number of people. So I, we've seen him in a bunch of movies and television shows. But I don't know that I've ever seen Paul Giamatti play the, uh, the same character twice. And so he, he somehow, he, he is somebody who can both put you off and yet bring you in at the same time. Dominic Sessa, who plays Angus, is, uh, this is his first movie. Um, he had been a drama student or been in school, in, in boys' school, but uh, um, had never, didn't have an agent, didn't have a manager. We had this wonderful casting director, Susan Shopmaker, who decided to go out and find, you know, a discovery. And one of the, the, the smart places she went was the private boys' school's drama department and say, all right, who do you have? Who do you offer up? And that's how Dominic came in. He didn't come in through any orthodox means. It was really from out of nowhere. And I don't know what the number is. She probably saw six, 700 boys for this, for this part. And Dominic, uh, Dominic, early on, we said, well, wait a minute, this is somebody to pay attention to. And Alexander put him through the paces. He, he had him uh, sort, of, sort of try out and test a number of times. And finally, he tested with uh, Paul Giamatti. And I think Alexander, Paul, all the rest of us said, no, this is the guy. I think Dominic's a good choice to play this part because he he has no tricks. He's a very honest actor. He's playing it as, as honestly as he can, and consequently, he's completely believable. I, um, I, I never, in looking at the finished film, and quite frankly, in all the dailies, I don't see any false moments. I don't see him at some point pretending to be something. He always seems to be that. Divine Joy Randolph is an actress who's been around for a while. That makes it sound like she's been doing it for years. She's just somebody who is doing features and television right now at, at quite, a, uh, quite a clip. And the interesting thing is she normally plays a comedic character. And not that she's very funny in the holdovers, but I wouldn't describe her character as uh, Mary Lamb as somebody who's, who's comedic. She actually has quite a uh, quite amount of sorrow in her, and um, um, is a, is a mother who's gone through a real real tragedy. Um, um, she we knew she had the acting chops, not just because she'd gone to the Yale School of Drama, but she had. As soon as we tested her, it was clear that she knew how to play this character. And uh, it was great to watch her because as an actress, she discovered who Mary Lamb was. She didn't, she started at one place and built the character and you could see her do it. And she ended up with an, act, uh, an accent that was quite original to, to divine, but also quite true to the, where her character came from. I just stand back off to the side of the set and watch a really gifted actor 
I mean, a really gifted director with these inspired actors discover something, and you just say, oh, I'm somehow a part of this, you know, and just a, and enjoy it. It was a, a really fun shoot. There have been, I've been through a lot of shoots that have been difficult, and, and um, you know, sometimes for reasons you're doing a, a straight drama, and it's not a lot of fun. This was a very breezy shoot. Um, a number of crew members who uh, are sort of hardened crew members out of, uh, out of Massachusetts said this was the most fun they've had making a movie in I don't know how long. I'm hoping that audiences take away from this film what I take away from it, which is a wonderful story, three characters who you are completely drawn to and feel significantly for and care about what their futures are. And also, quite frankly, it's just really fun. And what we've done is we've made, Alexander has made a 70s movie. How it's presented, how it's shot. We, um, from the opening credits, you'll know that this is not a movie that was made in, uh, made uh, for uh, 2022. It was, uh, it was very much, um, we're hoping you look at it and you say this is a 1970s movie that was made in 1970. I think The Holdover is about a number of things, as the best movies are, but for me, ultimately, it's about family, and it's about how we make our family, not necessarily the family we were born into. And it's three characters who are in search, in many ways, of a family. One who has tragically lost her family, another who has been coldly rejected by his family, and another one who's, for whatever reasons, has never been able to put a family together. And somehow this Christmas, they get together and they form this ragtag family. And I, if I, I think about it philosophically, the, 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 the movies that I've produced, if there's a unifying theme, it's very much about family.